YouTube is fostering the creation of original content through a new maker studio in Dubai. But what's in it for the online giant? I'm Bernd DeBoosman, and to find out more, I'm here with Jeremy Lawrence. Jeremy, in this week's edition, we have an interview with Robert Kinkle, YouTube's global chief business officer. Why was he here? Well, he was here to open the YouTube space, it's called. Um, before I talk about what the YouTube space is, um, YouTube's done really well in the Middle East. Obviously, video is incredibly popular here as a, as a medium. And to give you some numbers, the number of channels, YouTube channels in the MENA region has risen over 160% in the past three years. Over 200 channels now have 1 million subscribers and over 30,000 channels have more than 10,000 subscribers. Saudi Arabia has the highest watch time per capita globally. And interestingly, female vloggers in Saudi have grown 75% in the past year alone. So it's a, it's a real big market for them. And in fact, he mentioned because one of the big attractions is because it's got one common language, albeit with lots of variations, but one common language which means you can do very well in the region as a business. Interesting. So the Maker Studio itself, what is it exactly? Okay, well, it's the 10th to be open worldwide. It's in uh, Dubai Studio City, and basically it has top equipment there, and YouTube creators, as they're called, can come in, they can use the, the, the facilities, other people can, can come for workshops and, and, um, and seminars and things like that. So to qualify as one of those, uh, YouTube creators are those with over 10,000 subscribers, so if you've got a YouTube account, more than 10,000 subscribers, you can use that as a space. Uh, those who've got a thousand subscribers or more can get free access to all the workshops. So they're just trying to kind of foster this, this community. But what are the, the larger objectives of having the, this? Well, why are they paying for this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Kinkle says he wants it to be an incubator where not just these individuals, but brands and individuals can connect. He says that he wants to see a high utilization of space for creative content and creative marketing. Now, here's the interesting thing that he mentions that advertisers now are also content creators. So everybody needs to be learning how to do this better. And creators want to work with advertisers. Advertisers want to find the best creators. Everybody needs to be in this space learning how to, to improve the content of what they do. And to give you an example, um, on the screen behind us, we've got um, a commercial collaboration that Madonna and Kim Kardashian did at the, uh, the LA space that, that YouTube has on Madonna's new skincare line. So this, we haven't got anything like this here yet, but the, the overall aim one day will be to have uh, projects like that taking place here. So the, the content creators, especially in this region, some of them are very popular and almost, I would say, household names. Yeah. But are they actually making money from, from these videos? Yeah, good question. Well, just to, to go for some top line figures, uh, Google doesn't, uh, the parent company of YouTube doesn't release the breakdown of figures but YouTube's thought to make, uh, it, it was thought to have made $3.5 billion in ad revenue last year. Um, YouTube creators get a 55% split on the revenue from, uh, from advertising on videos that they've created. Um, behind me, you've got uh, Dubai-based Mo Vlogs. He's got 5.7 million subscribers. When you get to that level, you can do well. So the top 10 earners last year globally all made more than $10 million each. Uh, I think the top one made something like 12 million pounds. He's a British guy. Um, but they're kind of like the unicorns. The top 3%, according to one study of most viewed channels, they bring in an average of $16,800 a year. So you've got to be doing really, really well to not make a particularly large amount of money unless you are one of the top, top, top 1%, if, if that. But Robert Kinkle said, defending the position of YouTube, these brands, they help people to become brands and then they become a brand that can leverage off that with merchandise, with writing books, with writing films, becoming a personality. So they'd argue that they're creating a platform for people to be able to sell themselves in lots of ways. And I suppose that partly explains why YouTube is investing so heavily in, in this, not only here, but around the globe, I suppose. Yes, but there is a bigger picture of this, and that bigger picture is that they've got a fight to, to A, attract talent, and B, to hang on to it. So just last month, uh, Instagram launched IGTV, which is a new service for long-form video from professional creators. So especially in the fashion side of things, you're going to see a lot of creators move to there. Facebook Watch, obviously Facebook's the parent company of Instagram. Um, they've got original content that they want to, to uh, promote, produced by partners, again on a 55% revenue share. And they set aside $1 billion in budget for 2018 to, to commission content from, uh, from content creators. 
Apple Prime, obviously Apple does make shows, but they're planning on working with uh, um, content creators on something similar. Finally, Apple Video has been long talked about. That's thought to be in the works for 2019. They want to take on Netflix, um, but they'll also be working with creators as well. So everybody's on the hunt for talent. So why are they all investing so heavily? Well, now we get to the real heart of the matter. So advertising on TV has always been a huge industry for the last 60 years plus. Um, but obviously traditional TV is migrating to digital. More and more people are watching video content on their phones, on, on well, any devices really. Just last week we saw the, the uh, Etislat and Expo announcement over 5G. Once you see 5G, you know, the, the, the possibilities for high quality video streaming at all times is just vast, it's limitless. So that's where the advertising dollars are going. So to give you the figures, uh, globally, the market was worth 13.23 billion in 2017. No, sorry, I think this is just in the US. 13.23 billion in 2017, predicted to rise to 22.18 billion in 2021. So it's a massive market and YouTube currently has a 20% share of that market. So it needs to protect its share and it needs to grow along with all the others that want in uh, a portion of that very lucrative pie. Interesting. Well, well, thank you. That's fascinating and staggering numbers, actually. I staggering. Um, and I'm sure given how popular this is and how fast things are moving, we'll be hearing it again about this topic very soon. Um, again, thank you for watching Inside AV. I'm Brenton Boosman and this is Jeremy Lawrence. Tune in every morning weekday at 10 a.m.